Hi, and welcome to the Engineers HVAC Podcast. I am Tony Mormino, your host today. So this is a double super fun episode here. So we are live on LinkedIn. <clears throat> Number one, filming this, excuse me, I got a little frog in my throat. You can tell we're live by my voice. And we also have one of our guests live on the factory floor with Nile Water Heating Systems. And Nile makes heat pump water heaters for commercial applications and for residential. But today we're going to talk about commercial applications for heat pump water heaters, which are in the news. And the way we're going to, the way this is going to roll is Chris is on the factory floor, which is loud. He's trying not to get run over. He's trying not to get hit with hammers. So we're going to let him, we're going to jump right into a quick interview with Chris. Then we'll talk a little bit more about their experience and about where we are. Well, we're in, we're in Maine. He's in Maine, Bangor, Maine. But Chris, while you're on the factory floor, Give us a quick rundown of what we're looking at. Let's do a little factory tour while we're while we're here. Take it away, Chris. Awesome. Thank you, Tony. It's awesome to be here. So um, wanted to give you all an opportunity to see kind of behind the scenes of what an, a heat pump manufacturer actually looks like and what it looks like to build something in the United States these days. So this is our, our factory in Bangor, Maine. Uh, standing right behind me here, you'll actually see several heat pumps uh, in the process of being built. Um, we have a number of projects coming across the line, all leveraging this exact model. This is our C-185 air source unit. You can see inside here for those that know a little bit about heat pumps. Uh, the refrigeration circuit is currently being being built out as well as our portable water side. Um, so you'll see our condensers over here. We've got our evaporator um, and all of our associated pipe work, our receivers our, and our compressors. Um, so really, awesome unit actually to, to see being built. This is one of the most compact uh, air source heat pumps, um, especially in the high temperature realm that you'll see. Um, very deep coil on this one. Um, a lot of capacity for a very small footprint. Uh, once they're built up, you'll see that they, they actually have a closed panel on top so they can be stacked. Um, very cool for um, inside mechanical spaces, um, and for ducted, ducted applications, places where traditional heat pumps would be a little bit tricky to, uh, to deploy. Um, so uh, any questions, Tony, on, on what we're seeing here and, and things I can, I can point out for your audience? Yeah, thank you so much. And we're going to show pictures of what that looks like finished in a mechanical room when, when Chris uh, goes to the back presentation room. But so just so the viewers understand, this is an, this is an air-cooled heat pump water heater. So we're yeah. making hot water with this unit by using electricity through a heat pump, correct? Correct. And so this is a very special heat pump, and this is what we do here at Nile. We build high temperature heat pumps. So these heat pumps are designed to take air temperatures from as cold as 10 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit and take that heat and convert it uh, to water or into a heat or to 160 degrees or less for heating water. So a lot of our applications are going to be domestic hot water, but really anywhere where higher temperatures are desirable um, for water-based applications, that's where you're going to see our heat pumps. These are behind me, like I said, these are air source heat pumps, although we do build a lot of water to water heat pumps as well. And, and Chris, what would you say is the biggest difference between a water source and air source heat pump? Well, it's all in the name, right? Uh, it's where, <laughs> our where our energy is coming from. So you'll when you go into either heat reclamation or more temperate climates like the coasts where we're talking the Pacific Northwest, California, on down into the south. And Tony, this is extraordinarily common in Florida. We tend to put air source heat pumps outside because the weather is nice all year long. You know, kudos to you guys. I'm from Chicago uh, where it's currently below freezing. Um, but that allows us to extract that energy in those nicer climates and bring it indoors and use it for, in our case, for high temperature heating, um, HVAC side, we use it for space conditioning purposes. Um, but that is, uh, that is the, uh, the low hanging fruit of heat pumps, is being able to just plant a heat pump somewhere and extract the energy from the ambient air. Um, there are, as we get into commercial applications, there are a lot of opportunities to leverage what we call water source heat pumps. So um, in the residential world, we talk about geothermal. That's traditionally all employed through water source heat pumps where they have a geo field and they're extracting energy from the ground and it's all run through a water loop. 
Um, so your heat pump extracts energy from that water and then moves it to another water um, to another water system, or so sometimes we go to water to air. In commercial buildings, we have other water sources available to us, whether that's a boiler loop, a chilled water loop, a condenser system. There's a lot of opportunities to leverage existing infrastructure, gain efficiencies in those systems by chilling that water, and then we use it to make domestic hot water. Um, so uh, to your point, biggest difference there, where's your energy coming from? Great explanation. There, are there some size differences between the units? And if so, why is there? Yeah, absolutely. So the biggest driver of sizing of a heat pump is the size of its compressor. How many tons it's going to offset uh, either on heating or cooling. In our case, we are exclusively making machines that provide heat. Um, HVAC, talk a little bit more about cooling. But inside this particular unit behind us, our C185, that's a 185,000 BTU air source unit um, at its nominal rating. And that's driven by the size of its compressor, which in this case is a uh, 20, uh, 20 horsepower compressor. Um, when we get into other size classes, you go to like our E360, which is a 30 horsepower compressor, or we've got our little, our little C90 that's operating on uh, a 15 horse compressor. Um, so all the units spanning all different sizes, that's what's gonna be the major driver here. Excellent, and could you, is it possible Landon could just do a quick view of the inside of that unit while you while you audibly tell us what he's looking at? Is it possible yeah, there? Absolutely. I don't want to show him anybody's way, but. Yeah, come around the side here. So kind of looking looking through everything here, we have our mm -hmm. compressor all, all already wrapped up, ready to go here. Um, we've got our receiver. We've got, this is our condenser. So we're taking energy from the air in this evaporator. So air, and actually I'll bring you around Landon so you can see what exactly what we're talking about. This is a traditional evaporator coil that you'd see on any space conditioning equipment. Um, we're extracting heat here, cooling that air down, transferring that into our refrigeration circuit. We then transfer that energy to our compressor, which takes that energy and compresses it, which creates that heat we're looking for. Um, so we'll take that 40 degree ambient air and turn it into 140 to 160 degree water. Um, we then take that, send that, that refrigerant to our condenser over here. So this is a brace plate heat exchanger, double wall, uh, for potable applications. Um, it exposes that extraordinarily hot refrigerant to the, to the water, heating that water as it passes through the unit and providing that temperature out to a storage tank or whatever, whatever you may have from a storage media. Um, we do have a couple of different configurations here. This one in particular appears to be a multi-pass. Um, so there's, this unit is going to be operate exactly like an indirect fire boiler. So it's just going to dump BTUs into a storage volume as quickly as it can at a set delta T. Uh, our single pass machines would add a control valve in here, um, which is going to modulate the flow on this pump, um, controlling the outlet temperature. So we're going to maintain a precise outlet temperature, which gives us some advantages when we get into app actual applications. Um, so a little bit, little bit different, there are a little bit difference internally when we get into that type of that or that type of machine. And if you were looking at the inside, Chris, of a water source unit, what would be the difference? Biggest difference is this evaporator here. So this, uh, in order to extract heat from air, you need a lot of air at a very high flow rate um, to constantly be moving across this coil. When we get to water. Water is much more energy dense. Um, so we, in those water source units, we actually make a C-185 water source unit. Um, and it is about, I don't know, about 60% the size of this, this housing for the same amount of BTUs. Um, so we take all of this out, we take the blowers out of the fans out, and we're left with just uh, two brace plate heat exchangers, like the one that you saw inside the unit there, uh, to allow us to extract the heat from a water source and then apply it to the, the, the refrigeration circuit, just like you do in the second we already described. Very cool. Excellent explanation, Chris. Well, do you want to move on to something else on the floor there? This is great stuff. Thank you so much. There you got it. We'll, uh, we'll move past engineering here. There's a, there's a little meeting, impromptu meeting awesome. happening, so we'll get out of their way. This is um, the real, this is the real story behind manufacturing right here this is yeah not, we're not just showing you a catalog here we're showing you the <laughs> real deal so we're currently uh those are all of our work in progresses on this side of the building and actually landon i'll let you just kind of pan across the uh, across the floor here 
So um, kind of on our left is all of the machines that are in various stages of being built. And on the far right is the goods that are being stacked, ready to be built. So you see we have a lot of this particular unit being built right now. Um, now we'll go ahead and kind of pivot, pivot back around and I'll show you where all of this product ends up at over here on our test bench. So one of the unique things about Nile is our commitment to quality and making sure that when we send one of these, these high temperature heat pumps out into the field that it works on day one. That means that we run every single unit here at the factory, we pressurize it, we run it at temperature um, to make sure that it does exactly what it's going to do. We log all of that information here and save that in perpetuity for our customers. Um, so absolutely in, in, incredible um, quality control here to make sure that what we say these things can do, they actually do. Um, I had, currently have a unit waiting to be tested here. This is one of our C250s. So this is similar to our air, or the air search unit we already looked at being constructed, but slightly larger. It's a 250,000 BTU unit, really designed for rooftop applications uh, in warmer climates. So you see a lot of these in California, Florida, et cetera. Um, we've got you know vertical discharge coming off this one where the airflow is going up. We've got dual evaporators, one on, or one on each side of this particular unit to give it a lot of, a lot of surface area for its given footprint. Kind of pivoting back over to this side, you'll see actually here's a C250 that's currently being tested next to a much smaller air source unit. This is a C90. Up, oh, and we just kicked on. I'm sure my audio just got super dampened. Um, Sounds great. Sounds what's, great. <laughs> what's, what's awesome here is that I am standing five feet away from this thing while it is running, um, and I can still talk to you. So these units are incredibly quiet. Um, something to take a great deal of pride in, and we continue to innovate and make strides to make them even quieter. Any, that's, any really, that's really yeah. good. No, you're coming in loud and clear, actually. We can hear you just fine. Normal awesome. factory noises in the back. And if you're just tuning in, what we're looking at here are air-cooled, air-source water heating units, water heaters. Heat pump <laughs> water heaters. Oh, my gosh, I'm trying to get that out. I'm not even on the factory floor, and I'm struggling. But they're air-cooled. <laughs> Um, heat pump water heaters is what we're looking at for commercial applications. So, and, and to Chris's point, these are absolutely fantastic on sound, and that is very necessary these days, especially as I know very intimately in California, they do not want these um, very loud. So, look at how close we are to these units, and you can barely hear them. So, just uh, when it comes to the sound they're kicking off, these are absolutely fantastic. And this uh, C90 is a very popular unit of ours, all the way from Hawaii to. California. So it's very cool seeing those being built right now. Absolutely. And so let's actually, we'll pop over here too, so you can see another variant. So that was an axial air source unit. Um, so that's a traditional fan. Um, over here, this is one of our C-185s that's uh, going through build right now that actually has a blower installed. Um, so this is this has been an option for quite a while on the C-185, but one thing that's unique about our heat pumps is their flexibility and in installation. So we try to, to provide an installer a packaged heat pump that is a water heating system in a box. Um, so that when it arrives, they're hooking up the domestic water to this thing and immediately they have what they need to produce hot water. Um, that means that the units are gonna get put in a wide variety of situations though. So uh, traditional traditional heat pump manufacturers are most often going on rooftops when we talk about air source units. Um, and that means lots of fans, low static. Um, they're just taking air from around them and discharging it in whatever direction they do necessary. These particular units are very popular though in parking garages where, uh, especially when we get into colder climates, it's a little bit warmer. Um, inside the garage, you got all that thermal mass from all that concrete, all of the cars putting off heat. Um, so there's an opportunity to get more efficiency, more energy, um, but you have to fit into a, into a place that traditionally heat pump wouldn't fit into. So you put the, you would install this in that space, and then this blower actually gives us a, a lot of static so that we can we can push against ductwork and duct this thing in and out of the space. Um, so lots of flexibility there. I already mentioned these are popular in that space as well because they're stackable. They're very short uh, once they're employed, um, and it as a very useful uh, form factor. No, that's um, great, Chris. One thing too, while we're out here, I just I want to give credit to our manufacturing team. Um, and actually, Landon, if you take a look at the heat pump and look down on this one, um, you'll see that Nile um, 
is very, very focused on um, lean manufacturing techniques and not building lots of monuments inside of our space so we can be flexible in what we build and when we build it. So looking around us, we've got a couple of cranes um, that are bolted to the floor, but everything else is mobile. So our team has, has, has put every heat pump on a rolling skid that's at the appropriate height for the build um, that allows them. So if something, you know, if we're missing a part and we're building a unit, we can pull it off the line and we don't have conveyors. We don't have all of this, all, all of this um, moving machinery. We don't need a, um, a forklift. And that allows us to, again, keep things moving keep product on uh, going out the door. That has enabled Nile to do some things that are absolutely unheard of in this space, um, which has continued to deliver units all throughout the, the, the supply shortages of last year. Um, and then ultimately at the, this year, uh, we've had lead times as low as eight weeks on heat pumps. We can actually mm -hmm. build heat pumps faster than most boiler manufacturers can build boilers. Um, so this is- what's, uh, So what's the current lead time? Uh, so currently we're sitting at about 14 weeks. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll uh, give a little ribbing to Copeland while we're live here. We're waiting on some part or some, <laughs> co some Copeland compressors. Hopefully they hear this loud and clear. Um, usually we don't have this much work in progress on, on the floor, um, but they're, they are coming through and we'll be moving units out just a little bit delayed from their initial, initial delivery dates. <laughs> All right. So if the you know president of Copeland's listening, let's help out <laughs> Nile folks you know, Bangor, Maine, and get them some compressors. So they're only behind. They're only a little bit late because they're such a good company and such quality product. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We we value their partnership. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Awesome. All right. Well, Chris, I have a bunch of questions for you, but I'm going to save them for when you're in the back room. Is there anything on the factory floor? Anything else you want to show us? Um, I think that's all I have for the moment, unless there are any questions out here. Uh, again, I don't want to, I don't want to continue to be in these guys way. They're being really generous with their, uh, keeping, keeping up the background. <laughs> okay. uh, just one question for you. So, um, now we, that, uh, psychometric chamber to test mm -hmm. the units at elements. Can you explain a little bit about that? And obviously it's not seen in this video, uh, but I think yes. that would be a good point to cover. So now water heating systems uh, currently operates across two facilities. This is our primary manufacturing floor, but we also have um, a portion of our R&D at our parent company, Nile Systems, um, on the other side of the river, about 15 minutes away. And that's where our psychrometric chamber is. So we have the ability to uh, test air source units specifically uh, at a wide variety of test conditions. So um, basically when you buy a heat pump from Nile, we, we have the ability and we we put this information out on what a system is going to do, actually do in the field, not just back into, uh, you know, uh, what the compressor says it could do at various duty points. Um, so we do pride ourselves on the quality of the data that we put out in the marketplace and how it, um, you know, how it helps the engineer provide a design that, that will perform to the level expected. So that particular chamber though is, uh, it's about, 30 feet tall, 30 feet wide, and 50 feet deep. Um, and that enable that an air and volume enables us to um, cycle a heat pump of this size um, for a long duration and make sure that we can get test conditions from, we've gone as low as zero degrees inside of our test chamber all the way up to over 100 degrees. Uh, so that, that allows us to run the entire gamut. We're actually upgrading the humidification over there right now to allow us to really hit saturation at near freezing conditions. Um, so we'll be able to actually do that testing indoors. We've actually been doing a lot of that testing outdoors because lo lovely Maine encounters those conditions around 40 degrees here as well. Um, but we'd love to have a little bit more control for our, def our defrost um, testing that we do.